What is going on everybody? It's your boy Nathan with Skills and today we're going to be talking about some changes that we're getting to Title Update 5. This should be releasing on July 23rd, 2019, so just two weeks from the release of this video. Now there are a lot of changes to Skills. Skills are getting a huge buff because they realize, the developers realize that the game right now is straight DPS. In a game that's a looter shooter, that's an RPG, there should be skills that you can use and still feel powerful. Right now, the only thing you can use to feel powerful are weapons, right? Whether you're sniping, using a shotgun, using an AR, the only builds that feel powerful and that are worth using are those DPS builds. So in Title Update 5, that is all going to change. We're actually gonna take a look at all the changes on a list and we'll have the list on the screen in just a second. But while we wait, we're gonna listen to what they had to say at the state of the game, skills wise. Uh, what do you think are the biggest things we should talk, be talking about when it comes to skills in episode one, Bruce? Skills will feel deadly now, yeah. okay. and they should. Cool. And that's something that I want to emphasize and get out there. Um, guys, like, skills are coming. Like, get <laughs> yeah, ready. Get, get ready. Brace yourself. Yeah. Um, okay. No, that's, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, people have talked about the increase in power a lot uh, yeah. across different aspects of it, PBE and uh, Dark Zone as well, and then the ODZ. It, is, are there things yeah, that are specifically address. happening in the ODZ? So the ODZ uh, is definitely something that we could really quickly cover or yeah, uh, yeah. touch on. The, um, the ODZ does, we say that there's no normalization in the ODZ, but we do affect the damage of skills. Unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily work out the way it should with, mm -hmm. with certain platforms, skill platforms. The turrets, every projectile-based turret and the striker drone, I mm -hmm. guess, uh, to summarize. So that's why you're seeing particularly high damage on those skills, uh, higher than we would like. Um, currently, Red Storm and some smart fellas upstairs are investigating solutions to this. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we agree that the lethality of skills in the, in the ODZ right now is probably higher than it should be. But we also want to stress that skills will feel deadly now. Um, what else do we need to cover before we get into the nitty gritty? I know you've got a yeah, big list. So um, the big things um, yeah. for skills. I think we can highlight and we can highlight some 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 good ones here. Um, so first and foremost, we on Friday updated the PTS and increased the generosity of skill haste on gear and talents across the board. Okay. Um, and I think the end result was really positive. We also, in tandem with that, lowered the base cooldowns of skills, or almost all skills, across the board. Um, those two things in particular, or in combination, create what I consider a pretty um, good place right now for, for skill haste and skill cooldowns and viability and uptime and all that stuff. But in addition to all of those things, we did one more thing, which I think is going to hopefully make a lot of people happy. We've removed the minimum hard cap of 10 seconds on skills. And we lowered it from 10 seconds to 3 seconds. Mm. Meaning, if you really Ooh. go ham on skill haste, and you're using one of our lower cooldown skills, like the Cluster Seeker or Pulse, you can, really, you can push that below 10 seconds. Um, mathematically, I don't know if it's possible, but uh, you you could get it down to probably about five seconds, uh, the cluster seeker. So there's the challenge. Th that's that's cool. So this is in tandem with all of the increases to skill damage and base platform damage, which I'll get into. So I think that's a big one. That that's a really big one um, that should make a lot of people happy. On the PTS, you could get the cluster seeker with one skill haste mod and skill haste gear. You could get it to ten seconds. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you could get it a little bit below 10 seconds, but you are at that minimum cap. If you plug in another skill haste mod, you're going to lower that further. Okay. So, like I said, it's five second seekers might be a thing. Okay. Uh, skills are coming. Skills are coming. Okay. Uh, so have fun. Yeah, let's look forward to it. Well, knowledge is power, so that's why, that's why we're here. Another big one I guess we can talk about real quick is uh, we fixed a bunch of bad behavior and synergy related to like the BTSU gloves and how it interacts with Pulse. I want to take this moment to, uh, after talking to Frederick and some of the guys on the team, uh, so Pulse, the Pulse status 
effect is not technically a status effect. Okay. And it should not be treated as that. So okay. let's get that out there. Um, it, it's The BTSU gloves are meant to affect things that are elemental in nature. The pulse is not like that. The pulse is not a blind. It is not a fire effect. It's not a poison or a gas okay. or a confused. So, so you might have seen some odd behavior and been like, oh, Potter's 40 second <laughs> pulse durations. And it's like, no, forget it. Um, and another big one is you can no longer blow yourself up with your that own is, quick deployed big... uh, mm. skills with the, the BTSU gloves. Funny, though. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. No, so if you quick deploy your, your <laughs> skill platforms while charged with an elemental effect or a status effect from your BTSU gloves, you will not set yourself on fire or that's, explode that's or great. bleed to death. Okay. Um, meaning so. if you go down and you quick deploy your reviver hive, um, it'll save you and not murder you. <laughs> the radius of the gunner's riot foam grenade from two meters to three meters, I think that's a nice quality of yep. life improvement. It's quite mm -hmm. difficult to stick people. Um, and that's kind of the last of sort of like the more general things. Let's dive into some mm. of the big tickets. What are your favorite for, uh, details? Yeah, let's go into it. So the turret. So we increased the base damage of the assault turret by 22.5%. So with 3,000 skill power and a bunch of beefed up damage mods, um, that puppy does about 30,000 damage per shot right now at the, at the top end. Um, we've also increased the assault turret base duration uh, from 120 seconds to 300. Um, and the, uh, the base turret platform's health by 100% as well. So it's more durable. Which gets to the next one. So the striker drone, the striker drone's base damage was increased by 7.1% which sounds conservative, and it's very conservative considering that the striker drone's damage profile is quite low. It's a lot lower than the turret in okay. particular. Mm -hmm. But the striker drone is not really meant to be a killer. It's more of a nuisance, and it will flush targets from cover and annoy the AI. It's like bees, right? It's like, yeah. not the bees, not the bees. <laughs> um, or one big bee, I guess. Mm. So we buffed its base damage a little bit, but here's the kicker. The Blitzkrieg Blasting Powder damage variant for the striker drone, we buffed its damage increase from 200% to 600%. Damn. So if you want to, you can mod the striker drone at end game, and assuming you've got enough skill power, you can make it pretty murderous. A very okay. angry bumblebee. A very, very angry bumblebee. Okay, yeah. I like that. We've also increased the uh, base duration of all the drone platforms from 120 seconds to 300 seconds, just five minutes, so it's going to follow you. And really the intention is that the duration of the platform itself shouldn't really be a consideration. Um, I like that. Yeah, it's more if you, it's, the intention is that you need to use your skill effectively and not just sort of like toss it into harm's way. And if you can preserve it, it will last the majority, if not the entirety of an encounter. Uh, that's the goal. So I think cool. that that's will cool. accomplish it. Um, accomplish that, anyway. Uh, we've also normalized, I won't go into the nitty gritty details, but we've normalized the health value of all drone platform variants to be the same uh, for balancing purposes because there were some outliers there. Um, okay, the seeker mine. This one's cool. So the explosive seeker mine radius now correctly says 5 meters in the UI. It erroneously says six meters. The increased cluster seeker mine, uh, we increased the cluster seeker mine explosion radius from three meters to four meters. So mm -hmm. it should have an easier time catching people without necessarily being too overpowered. Okay. All of these changes, they apply to PVE and PVP as well. And then I guess the, the damage modifier on top of that. Yeah, so everything, the way the skills and PVP normalization works is that they're currently reduced by a percentage across the board. So anything that is changed here will affect the landscape, mm -hmm. but will still be affected by the normalization modifiers. Yeah. So a striker drone is still doing less damage. The assault turret and the striker drone are not doing 30,000 damage per shot to a player. They're doing less than that. Yeah. But the ratio is, of the increase is the same. Yes. Uh, yeah, when you apply the PPP modifier. Yeah, so the, the, if we increase the turret damage by 10%, it's going to do 10% more damage in PvP. Yeah. So the UI, in addition to the 
um, the fix to the explosive seeker mine radius and the cluster seeker mine radius increase, uh, the UI now correctly shows that radius, whereas before it was smaller than it really was. And yeah, so I like we, that. Like we've cleaned can, that up. That can be very confusing, like if you read something yeah. and then see something and it's not exactly. what you so expect. Exactly. So we, 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 and there's more, we did more fixes similar to that, but that's one I wanted cool. to highlight in particular. Um, so here's another big ticket change. Increase the explosive seeker mine's base damage by 25%. So the, the which w was already quite high, now it's higher. So the mm -hmm. explosive seeker mine is the hardest hitting skill in the game. Second, or, f and the only, so the one being closest to it is the bombardier drone. Okay. But the explosive seeker is king burst damage. Um, there you go. Increased cluster seeker mine base damage by 42.8%. Okay. The intention here is to make sure that the cluster seeker remains the best thing. Its its job is for clearing the trash, mm -hmm. so it will absolutely murder red bar enemies in I one in one go. Increase the mender seeker mine base duration from 120 seconds to 300 seconds. Again, five minutes. The yeah, that's really cool. The intention again is that it's not something you should not be concerned about the duration. You should be concerned about keeping the mender, the secret mender alive. Yeah. Firefly, the, uh, we increased the Burster Firefly base damage by 6.7%. That's just to kind of like give it more of an identity um, from its counterpart, the Demolisher. Um, Pulse, this is big. So we made lots of back-end fixes for consistency and usability, um, but one in particular that I think is going to make a lot of people happy is that the Scanner Pulse will now begin its cooldown after a three-second delay upon activation, rather than at the end of the pulse effects duration. Meaning, so we had, we had behavior where you would pulse, and as long as there was something alive that was under the effect of the pulse, um, or was being affected by your pulse, the cooldown would not begin until that duration expired. Mm. That's super annoying. Right, so it essentially made, meaning if you invested in your pulse's duration, you were counterintuitively Increasing consequently your cooldown essentially. Yeah. So like if you increase your, if you attach skill haste but then add duration, they're kind of ca not canceling each other out. Yeah. That's a behavior that obviously is not ideal. So we've completely removed the cooldown of the scanner pulse from its reliance on the duration. Cool. So now you can have a very short cooldown pulse and pulse away as much as you want. I like that. It's also like more intuitive, right? Like you click the the button and the cooldown after three seconds. Shows. Yeah, exactly. And and this is, I mean, this is the division one behavior. So um, oh, yeah. we're just sort of staying consistent with that. Makes sense. Um, there has been a slight nerf to the Banshee Pulse. Its cooldown was forty seconds. It's now sixty seconds. Um, but we made a bunch of fixes behind the scenes in order to make the Banshee Pulse gain um, um, from the proper mods and not double dip from other things. So we made a nice consistency pass there. Um, but unfortunately for people who were really uh, happy with um, the cooldown on the Banshee Pulse, uh, unfortunately we had to increase it. Um, and we've also removed its interaction with the radius increase mods. Okay. So a Banshee Pulse that went further than you could snipe was okay. unintended. <laughs> unintended. Okay. Uh, so that's a behavior you might have noticed on the PTS. That's, that's how we do the fixed. PTS. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, the chem launcher, we've increased the radius of the riot foam nice. from 1.5 meter meters to 3 meters. Damn. I like yeah, that. That's cool. Yeah. So it's much easier to catch people with it, um, and you can also increase that radius further with mods and whatnot. So that was actually a lot of really good information. So. Just to sum it up, he, on the screen right now, you guys are going to see a full list of everything they did. So if you guys want to take a screenshot of this, you guys can. Thanks to the guys that read it over there. They, they put a full list together. Um, the division sent it over to them. So it was pretty cool. There's a lot of really good changes to the turret. A lot of really good changes to the drone. If we take a look at the changes that they have coming up for the Seeker Mine, the Firefly, the Pulse, the Chem Launcher. Some really cool stuff just... What I'm really interested in is Pulse because I think Pulse is going to be more viable now. You could probably almost run Pulse with no on the ropes and it's going to be really good. 
And not only that, the Chem Launcher, the Hive, the Firefly, the Seeker Mines. I can't wait to try all of these new skills out. What do you guys think about the new skill changes? Do you guys feel like it's a good step in the right direction? Let me know in the comment section. Make sure you guys voice your opinion. Let me know what you guys think about this. I'm really excited. I'm ready for title update five. We have about two weeks to go. Well, a little bit under two weeks to go, July 23rd. So hopefully you guys are excited about it. That's going to be it for this video. Make sure you guys turn that notification bell on so when I do release a video, you guys get notified. Until the next video, nothing but skills out. <laughs>